Hey, everybody. Jayden from the Office of the Medical Director here. I just wanted to take a minute to go through and kind of cover some of the information pertaining to the two new medications we've put in formulary. Um, so you'll see they are acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Both of these medications are readily available over the counter. I'm sure you're super familiar with them in that sense. But today we're going to talk about adding them to protocol and the six different protocols that that affects. So some objectives is just going to be covering those protocols and then talking about indications of use for each of those meds, the onset of action for those meds, how long do they last, different methods for obtaining a blood pressure, and then we're going to talk about different pain scale ratings and why that's important. So some quick facts about acetaminophen. The FDA has approved this for mild to moderate pain, moderate to severe pain with an opioid adjunct, and then fever in patients two years and older. So we've applied that to our protocol, and we'll kind of show you our indications for that as written in our protocols. Onset for Tylenol or acetaminophen, most people probably know it as Tylenol, is going to be 10 minutes for pain and about 30 minutes for fever. We're going to have a peak effect around one hour mark, and we can expect four to six hours for pain control and six hours or greater for fever control. These doses, when they're going to be given... IV should be given over the course of about 10 minutes. Uh, PO, obviously, they just take it. And then one of the cool things about acetaminophen is that previously it had been a little bit too expensive for everyone to be able to carry in a readily available quantity. But now there's some cheaper alternatives, and that's really exciting because now we're going to get to see that used a lot more. And it's going to give us more pain control options with the exception of, you know, Toradol and and um, ibuprofen that aren't uh, narcotic medications. So ibuprofen, uh, it's a non-steroid drug. It's FDA approved for inflammatory diseases, rheumatoid disorders, mi mild to moderate pain, fever, and osteoarthritis. It takes about 30 to 60 minutes to kick in, peak effect around an hour, and lasts about an hour uh, to two hours. So indications for both of these medications are going to be adult and pediatrics with fever, adult and pediatrics with pain, adult and pediatrics suffering from traumatic pain. When we're talking about acetaminophen specifically, IV acetaminophen has been shown in research studies to work better than oral um, when we're dealing with sepsis. Also, febrile seizures, it's shown to reduce the uh, percentage of reoccurrence seizures when given IV. So why would you give this in the oral route? So oral route may be used um, most generally if you haven't established an IV or at the basic EMT level. It's also a good idea to give your medication um, if you have an indication for it and you don't have a reason to not give it, then it would be a good idea to, to give this medication versus not giving them any kind of treatment at all. So that's why we have an oral route for this as well. IV route gets a little bit uh, complicated because this is going to mostly be a weight-based amount, um, depending on if they're pediatric or adult. But we do see a faster time uh, for onset and a faster peak of the medication. So that's really when it starts kicking in and working kind of overdrive. Also with the IV route, we have to be very considerate to make sure that they haven't taken any medications um, of the same medication, uh, PO or by mouth, because we don't want to give them too much, uh, especially when we're dealing with uh, medications like acetaminophen that are really hard on the liver um, because that's where it's metabolized. So we have to be careful of that. IV route may be selected also in patients whose GI or yeah, who, who can't, um, you know, take something PO. So that's another alternative. And it's just good to have more tools in the toolbox. So if we look at the different packaging or the way these, that it's supplied when we're dealing with acetaminophen specifically, um, you can see that we have two separate types of vials and they're just, the, the concentration's different. And one, we have a thousand milligrams um, in a hundred mils. Oh, they're both actually the same, but sometimes they're a thousand milligrams in 10 milliliters of solution. Um, so you need to verify um, that you're dealing with the correct medication dealing with the correct concentration, and then figure out how much you need to give your patient. We also have pre-mixed bags. And if you look at this, um, 
for some reason, I thought that Offermev said 10 milliliters. Uh, but if you look at this, you need to see what it's initially packaged in so that when you put it into a bag of normal saline, you have the correct concentration. It's very important to get the correct concentration. This medication should be either delivered using a Dilaflow um, or an IV pump if you have that available to you. But with that, the dose is going to be given over 10 minutes. And we're going to go through each, each of those here in just a little bit. Um, but you would figure out how many drops or how much uh, solution that is. Uh, and you can set your dial of flow to that, or you can just put it on an IV pump and it's a lot simpler. So we're going to go ahead and look at our adult fever protocol and we're going to talk about that. So if we're dealing with an adult who has a fever and it's greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit uh, without any environmental cause, we've already done our cooling measures. Our options are at the EMT level to administer 650 milligrams of acetaminophen or 800 milligrams of ibuprofen. Now, beyond that, um, you know, you have your advanced EMT uh, and then your paramedic uh, levels of treatment where you can establish IV and you can give this medication through the IV route. For adults, uh, when we're dealing with fever management, we're looking at one gram or a thousand milligrams over the course of 10 minutes. So knowing your concentration is super important so that you can deliver the appropriate amount of medication to the patient. When we're dealing with the IV route and you uh, select to give the acetaminophen, you're going to draw that up. And if you've got, say, 10 milliliters of solution, you're going to uh, take out 10 milliliters of solution from your normal saline bag prior to placing this in there so that we have the correct dosage. If you elect not to deliver the acetaminophen, you also have Catorolac, which is another NSAID medication that you can give, and you can give that 30 milligrams IV, or you can give it 60 milligrams IM, as long as the patient's less than 60 years of age. The next protocol that we're going to look at is the pediatric fever protocol. So, again, kind of the same thing greater than 100.4 without any environmental causes. We get down to the advanced EMT level before we can administer the medication though. So this is not a medication that is in formulary for the EMT level to administer. And that reason is because this is a weight-based dose, which means that med math is involved. And it's not something that's taught in the initial curriculum for all EMT programs standardized across the nation. So acetaminophen is given to pediatric patients at 15 milligrams per kilogram by mouth at this level. Or you can give ibuprofen 10 milligrams per kilogram by mouth. I've, as you get a little further down, you can start an IV and you can give Ketorolac, which again is another NSAID, or you can give acetaminophen. The dose is the same for oral route as it is for IV. So just kind of keep that in mind. So with fever, we want to make sure that we're obtaining a temperature. There are a couple of different thermometers out on the market. Um, most people have the one that's probably up at the top. You pull out the probe, you place a probe cover over it, you select if you're using oral or axillary, and then you place that thermometer. There's also tympanic, which takes the uh, temperature across the forehead. Um, in recent times, I've even seen the laser thermometers, you know, since COVID times. Um, and then the rectal route as well, which you likely won't be performing this. I haven't um, seen anybody do this pre-hospital, but it is something that's done in the emergency room quite a bit just to get a good, accurate core temperature. It is the most accurate temperature. Um, the most inaccurate temperature is the forehead or the tympanic. Um, if you have a choice, you, um, I would say use the oral route if you're dealing with a patient that's four years or older. Don't have them bite down on the thermometer probe, it needs to be placed in the back of the mouth, um, and you can use the tongue to kind of put pressure on it, but do not have them bite it. When you're doing this temperature obtainment method, they have to be getting this done 30 minutes after drinking any warm or cold fluids. Just as a reminder, because then it's more accurate, it's less accurate if they have something that they've ate or drank that's cold or hot. And we kind of get into our pediatric non-trauma pain, be our next one that we're looking for. 
So we have different levels of pain. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But if you're dealing with mild pain um, at the advanced DMT and above level, they can administer acetaminophen at 15 milligrams per kilogram by mouth or ibuprofen 10 milligrams per kilogram by mouth. That's for a pain scale of zero to three. As we get into our moderate pain, we have the IV access protocol. Uh, this is when we have Ketorolac that comes into play. Again, Ketorolac is just Toradol, which is another NSAID. It's 0.5 milligrams per kilogram for a max dose of 15 if we're dealing with IM, or excuse me, IV. Uh, acetaminophen, 15 milligrams per kilogram IV. That was the same dose that we've seen earlier. And then severe pain, same thing except for once we get down into the paramedic level, we can also consider fentanyl, morphine, uh, ketamine, and things like that. The next protocol that we're going to look at is going to be pediatric pain with trauma. So it's the same exact medications and dosages, uh, same exact pain scales. When you're dealing with the the patient, you want to get an accurate pain scale, and we're going to talk about those again here in just a few moments, but no administration of this medication until we're at the level in which we can obtain an IV, which is the advanced DMT and higher, so 15 milligrams per kilogram again for acetaminophen, 10 milligrams per kilogram for the ibuprofen. When we're talking about pediatric pain scales, we have a couple that we can use, the Wong-Baker faces rating, and then the FLAC scale. So if they're able to, um, you know, so they're old enough, you know, two to eight years old, they can point to which one of these faces um, on the pain scale. If they're younger than that, you can use the FLAC scale, which is a measurement of the face, legs, activity, crying, and consolability. And it gives it a value of zero to two for a total uh, point value of 10. So it's the same kind of scale that you're used to dealing with. And it'll give you a uh, roundabout way of obtaining a pain scale measurement for patients who can't verbalize that pain because they're too young to understand how to. Adult non-trauma pain is going to be our next protocol that's affected. So you can see here, we're starting with our pain scale at the top, zero to three. At the EMT level, um, we can administer this medication by mouth. So 500 milligrams of acetaminophen or Tylenol and then 800 milligrams of ibuprofen, also known as Motrin. Then we can do our IV access protocol at the EMT level, and then we, or excuse me, at the advanced EMT level, and then we can consider uh, that Toradol again. Once our pain scale increases from four to six, kind of the same thing, obtain the IV. Medication doses are the same for these patients. Uh, once you get to the paramedic level, we have fentanyl, morphine, and ketamine that we can administer. You also have the ability to administer nitrous oxide if you are an advanced DMT and you're dealing with severe pain at a 7 to 10 scale. There's a lot of different medications that are available to help manage this. So dealing with adults and trauma, we're going to click over here. The same exact thing, zero to three on the pain scale. They can receive this medication by mouth um, from an EMT level provider. We're dealing with 500 milligrams by mouth of the acetaminophen, 800 uh, by mouth for the ibuprofen. And as our pain scale increases, we have more um, tools available to us at the higher levels of licensure. Um, it's very important to notate in these protocols that we need to be obtaining uh, vital signs prior to administration of these medications. So pulse ox, end tidal, uh, blood pressure, heart rate, and if equipped, cardiac monitoring, at least a four lead. So for nonverbal adults, we also have a uh, pain scale rating that we can use here. And again, just kind of like that flax scale earlier, it gives you um, a rating for five different categories on a scale of zero to two for a total points value of 10. And um, you can look at this pain scale rating and, and kind of see it's very straightforward, uh, just like getting an APGAR or any other type of score. Um, and you just look at what is it that you're trying to find and, you know, say guarding if they're lying quietly and no positioning of the hands over the body, 
well, then that's a zero. If they appear to be rigid and stiff, then that's a two. And so we can use this to determine what a pain scale would be for a nonverbal adult so that we can treat them appropriately as well. These are some of the references that we use to build this presentation with. I'm going to take you over now and we're going to look at the formulary specifically to acetaminophen. So there's a lot of information on this medication in the formulary portion of the protocol. I encourage you to look through this. Um, be very careful when administering this to patients. Make sure that you've done a thorough assessment and that they haven't already taken anything with acetaminophen in it. It is in a lot of different medications, so we want to make sure that we're not overdosing them. Remember that acetaminophen is metabolized by the liver, so if they have a, a existing liver issue, we don't want to make that worse, so we would withhold that medication. And again, if they're allergic to it, you're not going to give it to them either. Now, the formulary is specific to ibuprofen. It will tell you all about it being an, an NSAID, which is a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug. Uh, it's used to treat you know pain. It also can cause GI bleeding and things like that. So we want to be very careful that they don't have an active GI bleed and that they haven't already taken some NSAIDs for the day. This is very important that we do our thorough assessments uh, on our patients, obtain vital signs, do a good history, get a good report, and make sure that they haven't already had these medications. Thank you for your time. Be sure to um, you know, complete your assessment quiz on Moodle so that you can use these medications. And also, if you're curious about new protocol updates and any updates coming down the line for us, subscribe to our channel. It'll give you a notification anytime we post a video, and then you'll have an idea of what's going to be coming down the pipe as far as new things. Thank you for your time.